say what you want about the human race, but regardless of gender, colour or creed, we really do like to get together and shoot the snot out of each other. And ever since some programmer realised the small white pixel floating across the screen sort of looked like a bullet, we've been doing it in the digital world too. War games have evolved through the decades, entertaining millions at the expense of billions of digital dead. And in the future, when we look back at the history of war games from the comfort of our irradiated hovels, we will remember one series of games among others, the game that introduced cruel insignificance to the shooter genre. This story begins back in 1942. Battlefield 1942 invaded the PC shores in September 2002. Unlike other World War II games at the time, and there really were quite a few, Battlefield wasn't interested in the struggle of an individual soldier. It didn't have a storyline, characters or save games. Battlefield was a multiplayer game, which allowed up to 64 people to team up and blow chunks out of each other using a variety of character classes and vehicles. Matches were domination style, with each team assigned a certain number of respawn tickets, which depleted based on how many times your teammates were killed and how many of the control points you occupied. Maps were mirrored like most of today's online first-person shooters. In 1942, you were defending or attacking, and the spawn points and resources available to you reflected that. You played as a soldier on either side of the Allied or Axis forces, the specific army depending on the battle you were recreating. Battles took place across multiple theatres of war, including the European, Pacific, North African, Eastern and Italian fronts. These included some of the war's most iconic moments, including Iwo Jima, the storming of the Normandy beaches, Operation Market Garden and the battle for Stalingrad. These can be played online or in super fun bot mode, which is great because you could shoot them and steal their vehicles without fear of revenge. Vehicles? Yeah, sure, like tanks, trucks, planes, aircraft carriers and even submarines. Naturally, there were more players than there were vehicles, so there was always this crazy bum rush to the vehicle spawn at the start of every round. There were fewer things more pathetic than spawning on an aircraft carrier and seeing the last of the planes flying away into the distance. You just kind of sit there waiting, thinking about maybe taking one of those crappy boats. Nah, one will show up eventually, and now the boats are gone too. Great. Ugh, forget this, I'll swim. 1942's biggest success was managing to make a truly cooperative experience where lone soldiers were punished and team players won matches. Unfortunately, like all good things, World War II had to come to an end. Not to make light of the death of billions of digital men, women and children, but if I'm going to get my balls blown off for a word, my word is poontang. In 2004, DICE took the war to the Indochina Peninsula with the epically cool battlefield Vietnam. Just like in 1942, an effort was made to ensure both teams used realistic equipment and tactics. So while the US were armed to the teeth with jets, Hueys and tanks, the NVA and Viet Cong had to make do with traps, placeable respawn turrets, spike pits, AA batteries and scooters. The choppers were a massive game changer too, removing much of the distance between the air and land battles. But the cherry on the icing of this death cake came in the form of the game's CD soundtrack, which lets you play some of the most iconic songs of the era from any of the game's vehicles. So you could gun fools down to Credence, roll over dudes with deep purple, and fly into battle with an accompaniment of Ride of the Valkyries. Oh, did I say fly? I meant scoot. Even better, the game would let you play your very own music too. Battlefield Nam was as fun as it was competitive. It was my first experience at being in a clan, but while many of us were playing Vietnam, many more were dueling in the 1942 mod Desert Combat, which was set during the Gulf War with modern guns and modern vehicles. It's fair to say, DICE took the hint. Initiating satellite scan. Camera deployed. Link established. Satellite coming down in 3, 2, 1. In 2005, the curiously titled Battlefield 2 came out on the PC with a brand new shiny engine. Accompanying the updated graphics was an astonishing audio engine and improved physics. The game also introduced squads, the unique commander class, awards, unlocks 
and stat recording. BF2, like its predecessors, had a bunch of expansion packs and free updates that extended its shelf life considerably. It came to consoles in the form of Battlefield 2 Modern Combat, which was fun, but nowhere near as polished as its PC counterpart. Retaining the pattern of releasing two games off the same engine, DICE went all futurismic with Battlefield 2142, set 200 years after World War II, where humanity faced a new evil. Ice. With 2142, the developers were freed from the shackles of history, allowing them to experiment with vehicles and game modes like they did in the 1942 expansion pack, Secret Weapons of World War II. The game featured hovercrafts, pilotable mechs, and futuristic weaponry. A new game mode, Titan, had you and your teammates working together to take down huge floating bases from the inside. Around the release of 2142, Electronic Arts bought the remaining shares of Digital Illusions after securing 62% in their initial 2004 acquisition. Right now, it's difficult to think of DICE as anything more than a shooter developer, but they're responsible for some pretty surprising titles, including Amiga Classics Pinball Dreams and Benefactor, the PlayStation Racer Motorhead, and 2008's fantastically original Mirror's Edge. That same year, they released a new type of Battlefield game, Bad Company, which had for the first time a campaign with narrative. The story revolved around B Company, a ragtag group of military outcasts. The game's not-so-serious narrative struck a chord with gamers, who we were probably sick of being told to care about the fake wars we were fighting in, and that was never Battlefield style. His name is Hacker. Hey, how you doing? You smell very clean. The game was fueled by the impressive Frostbite engine that allowed realistic deformation of buildings and terrain, and had an incredibly fun multiplayer component that built on DICE's previous online games. It also continued the developer's passion for quality sound design with distant gunfire crackles, and skull-shuddering explosions. The sequel, released in 2010, continued the adventures of B Company while refining and expanding the quality multiplayer. In between bad companies, DICE released a free-to-play cartoon shooter Battlefield Heroes and a re-release of sorts in the form of downloadable Battlefield 1943. But the weight of their development efforts has been going towards a project to knock a certain series off its pedestal. So here we are, a matter of weeks before Fight Night, and what we've seen of Battlefield 3 suggests DICE know where the series' strengths lie. Large-scale warfare, envelope-pushing graphical fidelity, superb sound design, vehicles and destructibility. However, the most obvious broadside comes in the form of a more traditional single-player narrative. Oh, and unlike Call of Duty, it has dinosaurs too, so it's already got the 4chan scene of approval. As with their previous games, I'm sure we can expect a bunch of expansion packs and updates, and it's fair to say that's probably where the battle will be lost or won. Both BF3 and MW3 will sell like hotcakes on release, but the real winner will be the one with the most troops once the firing has stopped. So what do you think? Did you play the old Battlefield games? Are you looking forward to Battlefield 3? Have you spent millions on a new computer? Tell us in the comment box below. Oh, and you may have heard that our review of the game is going to be a little bit late, as EA didn't send out press copies of the games early enough. So just stick your own score in the comment box and we'll average those out for the review score. That's how it works, right?